Some machine learning tasks are trying to predict an inherently ambiguous output, and human-level performance can establish a useful baseline of performance as a reference. But human-level performance is also sometimes misused. Let's take a look. One of the most important uses of measuring human-level performance, or HLP, is to estimate Bayes' error or irreducible error, especially on unstructured data tasks, in order to help with error analysis and prioritization, and just to establish what might be possible. Take a visual inspection task. This may have happened to you before, but I have gotten requests from business owners saying, Hey, Andrew, can you please build a system that's 99% accurate or maybe 99.9% .9 accurate? So one way to establish what might be possible would be to take a data set and look at the ground truth data. Say you have six examples where the ground truth label is these. And then to ask a human inspector to label the same data, blind it to the ground truth label, of course, and see what they come up with. And if they come up with these, you would say, this inspector agreed with the ground truth on four out of six examples and disagreed on two out of six. And so human level performance is 66.7%. You know, and so this would let you go back to the business owner and say, look, even your inspector is only 66.7% accuracy. How could you expect me to get 99% accuracy? So HLP is useful for establishing a baseline in terms of what might be possible. There's one question that is often not asked, which is, what exactly is this ground truth label? Because rather than just measuring how well we can do compared to some ground truth label, which was probably written by some other human, are we really measuring what is possible, or are we just measuring how well two different people happen to agree with each other? When the ground truth label is itself determined by a person, there's a very different approach to thinking about human level performance, which I want to share with you in this and the next video. Beyond this purpose of estimating Bayes' error and establishing what's possible, using that to help with error analysis and prioritization, here are some other uses of human level performance. In academia, HLP is often used as a respectable benchmark. And so when you establish that people are only 92% accurate, or some other number, on a speech recognition data set, and if you can beat human level performance, then that establishes, then that helps you to quote, proof that your learning algorithm is doing something hard and helps get the paper published. I'm not saying this is a great use of HLP, but in academia, showing you can beat HLP maybe for the first time has been a tried and true formula for establishing the academic significance of a piece of work and helps with getting something published. We discussed briefly on the last slide what to do if a business or product owner asks for 99% accuracy, and if you think that's unrealistic, then measuring HLP may help you to establish a more reasonable target. There's one other use of HLP that you might hear about that I'll be cautious about, which is I've seen many projects where the machine learning team wants to use HLP or beating HLP to prove that the machine learning system is superior to the humans doing the job. And as tempting as it is to go to someone and says, look, I've proved that my machine learning system is more accurate than humans inspecting the phones or the radiologists reading x-rays or something. And now that I've mathematically proved the superiority of my learning algorithm, you have to use it, right? I know the logic of that is tempting, but as a practical matter, this approach rarely works. And you also saw last week that businesses need systems that do more than just doing well on average test set accuracy. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, I would urge you to just use this type of logic with caution, or maybe even more preferably, just don't use this argument. I've usually found other arguments than this to be more effective at 
working with a business to see if they should adopt a machine learning system. The problem with beating human level performance as proof of machine learning superiority is multifold. Beyond the fact that most applications require more than just high average tested accuracy, one of the problems with this metric is that it sometimes gives a learning algorithm an unfair advantage when labeling instructions are inconsistent. Let me show you what I mean. If you have inconsistent labeling instructions, so that when an audio clip says um, nearest gas station, let's say 70% of labelers use this labeling convention, and 30% of labelers use this labeling convention. Neither one is a superior transcript to the other, both seem completely fine, but just by luck of the draw, 70% of labelers choose the first one, 30% choose the second one. So if the ground truth is established by a labeler, maybe just a labeler with a slightly bigger title, but really by one labeler, then the chance that two random labelers will agree will be 0.7 squared plus 0.3 squared, which is 0.58. So if you had two labelers use the first convention, there's a 0.7 squared chance of that. Or if both of your random labelers use the second convention, there's a 0.3 squared chance of that, then the two of them will agree. So the chance of two labelers agreeing is 0.58. And in the usual way of measuring human level performance, you will conclude that human level performance is 0.58. But what you're really measuring is the chance of two random labelers agreeing. This is where a machine learning algorithm has an unfair advantage. I think either of these labeling conventions is completely fine. But if a learning algorithm is a little bit better at gathering statistics of how often ellipses versus commas are used in such a context, then the learning algorithm may be able to always use the first labeling convention because it knows that statistically it has a 70% chance of getting it right if it uses ellipses or dot, dot, dot. So a learning algorithm will agree with humans 70% of the time just by choosing the first labeling convention. But this 12% improvement in performance, whereas human level performance is 58%, and your learning algorithm is 12% better, is 0.70. This 12% better performance is not actually important for anything. Between these two equally good, slightly arbitrary choices, the learning algorithm just consistently picks the first one. So it gains what seems like a 12% advantage on this type of on this type of query, but is not actually outperforming any human in any way that a user would care about. And one side effect of this is that if your speech recognition task has multiple types of audio, for some, there's this dot, 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 or ellipses versus comma ambiguity, and the learning algorithm does 12% better on this. If your learning algorithm makes some more significant errors on other types of input audio, then when its performance, where it actually does worse, could be averaged out by queries like these, where it kind of fake looks like it's doing better, and this will therefore mask or hide the fact that your learning algorithm is actually creating worse transcripts than humans actually are. And what this means is that a machine learning system can look like it's doing better than HLP, but actually be producing worse transcripts than people because it's just doing better on this type of problem, which is not important to do better on, while potentially actually doing worse on some other types of input audio. Given these problems of human level performance, what are we supposed to do? Measuring human level performance is useful for establishing a baseline, using that to drive error analysis and prioritization. But using it to benchmark machines and humans sometimes runs into problematic cases like this. 
I found that when my goal is to build a useful application, not publish a paper. You publish a paper, let's prove we can outperform people, that helps publish a paper. But I found that when my goal is to build a useful application, rather than trying to beat human level performance, I found that it's often useful to instead try to raise human level performance. Because we raise human level performance by improving label consistency, and that ultimately results in better learning algorithm performance as well. Let's take a deeper look at this in the next video.